Merry Christmas, almost. Same to you. Oh, no shaking, please. Let me show you something. I was on my way to lunch, and look what I found in the store. How do you like it? It's just like the one we had last year. Tisha, how can you say that? Come on, let's see what it looks like on the door. How come you're home so early? We had a half day today. And three is the burden until after New Year's. Well, I better get going. Audrey's waiting for me. We have more shopping to do. Come on now. It's only going to take a minute. Okay. Hi. Ooh, now that's what I call a wreath. Yeah. Just like the one we had last year. Oh, Letitia. Oh, don't pay any attention to her underneath that Ebenezer Scrooge exterior lives Santa Claus. I happen to know for a fact that she's getting me the present of my dreams. Hm, I am not. Yes, you are. A Mount Everest pen. The pen that has inspired the great writers of our time. Yuck. You can't kid a kidder, kid. It is a little embarrassing, though. You getting me the ideal present, and all I'm getting you is... That's enough now. You're not supposed to know what presents you're getting. Oh, it's okay, Dad. Willie's getting me an authentic Mickey Mouse watch. Antique, of course. A Mickey Mouse watch? They're for kids. Gee, I'm sorry, Peaches. She's really way off the mark. I'm sorry. Well, that looks perfect, Dad. It's just beautiful. I'll see you later. I hope he's a better writer than a liar. get one of those pins anyway. Oh, so he was right. We'll try a Harrison belt set on a stationery store on Almeida Street. Now that it's up, it doesn't look a bit like last year's. Beginning New Year's Eve, Decades presents a token. It's exactly what she wants. Yeah, I know. And just one previous owner who only wore it while she watched the Mickey Mouse Club. Well, it's divine. Must cost a fortune. Oh, uh, only in memories. I traded a bunch of stuff that I never use anymore. I borrowed ten bucks from Buddy. Really, you are shameless. <laughs> Truffles, they'll never miss them. Walnuts. Hi, Kate. Hi. What are you doing home so early? I was on my way to lunch, and I found the ultimate Christmas wreath. I couldn't resist coming home to put it up. I bet it's just like last year's. Sometimes I think you and Buddy must get up at four in the morning to rehearse your act. Oh, Nancy! You're just the person I wanted to see. Can I take Timmy off your hands for a few hours? Oh, Timmy's not here. Th that's why I came over. I'm kind of worried. Jeff was supposed to bring him back a few hours ago. I mean, did he call? I had to go out to the market. Phone hasn't rung all morning, I'm happy to say. He was supposed to be here for brunch. He even told me what to prepare. You don't think something could have happened, do you? I mean, traffic's pretty crazy already. Honey, it's just about 12.30. I guess you're right. Well, what do you want with Timmy? By Christmas tree. It's time he got initiated. But we can wait till tomorrow. Maybe it'll snow by then. Kate, you promised no snow jokes this year. They're irresistible. Oh, Timmy will love it. Snow or no snow. It's a date, then. Uh, I've got to get back to work. If you're going shopping, I have enough ties. That's what he thinks. Is Jeff uh, definitely coming for Christmas dinner? Well, he's counting on it. You two are getting along better these days, aren't you? Well, we're trying, at least till after the holidays. I'm glad. After all, it is the season to be jolly. I'm going to the market. You want to come? No, I think I better hang around in case Jeff calls or shows up or something. Okay. Christmas. Where have you been? 
man, you're hours late. I was just frantic. Well, better late than never. But th there's no answer at your folks' house. I was ready to call the police. Hey, calm down. I didn't say exactly what time I'd be here. You said you'd be here for brunch. You even told me what you wanted. <sighs> I forgot. I'm sorry. How about dinner? Any place you choose. Yeah, sure. Well, Mama. But I really was worried. Especially when there's no answer at your folks' house. Oh, well, Timmy and I never got there. Dad got a call from London. He had to leave a couple of days early. We went to the Springs. The Springs? You took Timmy down to Palm Springs? Yeah, it was great. Played in the pool and made friends with a little girl. I got some tennis in. Jeff, I thought we agreed you weren't going to take Timmy out of town without telling me. Palm Springs isn't out of town. Well, it is to me. And what did he do for two days? Sit in the boiling sun, watching you show off on the tennis court? No, I didn't play that much. And he was in the hotel nursery. He loves it there, you know. Yeah, I know. No, well, I don't like it. It's just irresponsible. And I sit here waiting for you for hours. Oh, well, if that's what's bothering you, why don't you just say so? Well, it's not just that, Jeff. It's your damned attitude. <laughs> My attitude? What about yours? What's wrong? Well, he's warm. He's got a fever. Oh, it's nothing. He's just been sneezing a little bit. Yeah, but he's having such a good time being dragged around Palm Springs, you decided not to give it a second thought, huh? What am I supposed to do when he starts sneezing? Check him into the Mayo Clinic? There were a dozen kids at that hotel. They all had runny noses. He probably has a little cold. Look, I have to accept the fact that you're inconsiderate where I'm concerned, but Timmy's just another matter. Oh, Nancy. You're just so stupid sometimes, Jeff. <sighs> If he misses this Christmas, he's got you to thank for it. Well, I guess I'd better leave before this all gets out of hand. Listen, I'm sorry that he has a cold. I'm sorry that I missed your brunch. Most of all, I'm sorry you're in such a rotten mood. I was looking forward to seeing you. Nancy, please, let's try and have a nice Christmas, okay? Bye, Timmy. I'll call you later to see how he is. please? Timmy had a little temperature when Jeff brought him back and he seems to be getting worse. I don't know. He just doesn't seem right. Mommy. Oh, okay, thank you. Bye. Oh, come on, sweetheart. class. But so am I. I think by now they would have designed one you could read. I don't think it's anything serious. I can't tell you how many times I stood in front of a light trying to decipher one of these things when you were little. There. It's 102. 102? Mother, an hour ago it was just under 100. Listen, is that Dr. Addison's car out front? 
Yeah, and Nancy wanted him to look at Timmy. What's wrong? Nothing. Timmy's just got a little cold, but Nancy's worried. Oh, good. Now I know what Timmy's going to give us for Christmas. What? His cold. First his mother will get it, then your mother, then me. We'll all be felled like oxen. Hi, Dad. Mom's in the kitchen. I'm going to take this stuff out to Nancy. We're all right for lights. Oh, terrific. Then we can start him on the tree after dinner. I'll help you bring it in, Dad. I'll be back in a minute. No, Willie, I didn't get the tree. I thought I'd wait till tomorrow, then Timmy could come with us. Yeah, terrific. If his cold is better, we can make a party out of it. Dad, could you give me a hand? Well, be careful here. Well, let's turn him off first. Letitia. <laughs> I'm sorry it took so long. Couldn't find the car. Oh, that's okay. Thank you, Billy. Hey, Timmy, old boy. You better shape up. Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, dear. How's he doing? Oh, about the same. Dr. Addison said that if I gave him an alcohol rub, it might bring the fever down. Oh, would you get that, please? Thank you. Please. Can I have that box? Hello? Hey, Jeff. Merry Christmas. Yeah, sure. She's right here. Nancy, it's Jeff. Tell him I've got nothing to say to him. Uh, well, you heard. It's frosty. There's a definite nip in the air around here. Oh, he's fair. Dr. Addison was here. Oh, no, no. It was nothing serious. You know the good doctor. Nancy could get him to make a house call for a hangnail. It's a cold and a sore throat. Well, listen, if, if you're going to worry, uh, try thinking of the rest of us. Well, I'm getting a little hoarse already. Okay, I see you then. Goodbye. Willie, I know you like Jeff, but just once. Just once what? Well, just once I'd like to feel as if you were on my side when there's trouble between us. Hey, come on, Nancy. I'm your brother. I love you dearly. It's just that sometimes I think you take out after Jeff over nothing. Nothing? You call him letting Timmy get sick nothing? Since when does Timmy need help getting sick? He does very well on his own. Look. No. no you look. I, I don't want to get into this. Mom made some chili. Would you like me to bring you some? No, I'm not hungry, thanks. I'm sorry I snapped. That's okay. If you do need anything, you just call. Okay, thank you. Broken so far, Dad. I haven't come across the angel yet. It's in here somewhere. Hey, look. The ornaments Willie made Timmy. From the mobile that used to hang over his crib. They need to be restrung, though. Oh, hey, you know, I forgot about those. But Timmy will be able to put them up himself this year. Isn't that a gas? Timmy's first ambulatory Christmas. Well, I want it to be perfect for him. Well, I can restring them. I've got some fishing line that'll work. Hey, when the tree goes up, Peaches, be careful where you put my present. Those pens are very delicate, and I wouldn't want mine to be in any danger. Willie, will you quit it? I didn't get you any Mount Everest anything. You're beginning to make me feel guilty. The thing I don't get is how he knows. Well, tell me something. Are you absolutely certain you know what he's getting you? Absolutely. How do you know? Because he always gets me what I really want. Because he knows me inside and out. How do you explain that? Because, frankly, Dad, I'm his favorite. And he's yours. Right. And you still wonder why the two of you know about each other's presence? Oh, uh, because we like each other. We can read each other's minds. That's one of the advantages of loving someone. Then how come I don't know what you've gotten me? Unless you thought about it, you'd know. 
When I was a boy, in our family, it was very hard for us to say how much we loved each other. There wasn't much hugging. I don't really know why, there just wasn't. Except on holidays, especially Christmas. Then we had an acceptable excuse. We didn't have to be embarrassed about showing our feelings. So all my life, I really look forward to it. I guess you could say it's Christmas around here every day. I guess you could. And I'm glad. Let Earth receive her king. Flat again. Me, flat, never. Joy to the world. You see? Willie, you're wonderful. Christmas can be a difficult time. Yeah. You know, Lizzie loved celebrations. Then we'll do our best to make this one a whopper. Good King, King Wences Loss looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Hello? Hi, it's me. If the offer's still open, I could use a bowl of mom's chili. Oh, sure. Come on right up. Is Timmy okay? Nancy? Nancy, how is he? I don't know. I gave him an alcohol rub, and I'm trying to give him a lot of fluids, but he can't seem to keep anything down. He fell asleep about ten minutes ago. You must be exhausted. Would you like to take a break over here? I'd be happy to sit with him. Oh, no, thanks, Mom. I want to be here when he wakes up. Call if you change your mind. Uh, he's awake. I'll talk to you later, Mom. Bye-bye. Timmy's not so good, huh? No. Night always seems to be the worst time when children are sick. It is for everybody. I'm sure he'll be okay in the morning, and it'll be back to Christmas business as usual. I'll just take this over to Nancy. I'll see you later. Willie. You're the best. Thank you. I needed that one. Nancy. Mother, Timmy's having convulsions. Oh, I'll call Dr. Addison and be right over. No, I already called him. He's going to meet us at the hospital. I'm going to need you to drive, okay? I'll be right there. Timmy? What is it? Convulsions. Dr. Addison's waiting for him at the hospital. You go to Nancy. I'll get the car out. You better tell Willie, but there's no point in waking Buddy. He's going to be all right. The convulsions were a febrile seizure. What's that mean? They were brought about by his temperature. When you brought him in here, Nancy, it was almost 106. What's wrong with him? I don't know. But as a precaution, we'd like to do lumbar puncture. No, th uh, th that's, that's for meningitis. 
I don't think that's what it is. I just want to be sure. All right. Uh, I, I don't understand. He was just sneezing a little bit. It could be a number of things. Now, I'm waiting for his chest x-rays. The uh, throat culture was negative on strep. Pneumonia? Possibly. I think it is a virus. He's very dehydrated. I, I was trying to give him liquids, but he couldn't keep anything down. The IV will take care of that. An IV? Nancy, we've got to begin to get his temperature down. All those, those tubes, he's so level. He must be awfully frightened. I, I better go to him. If he wakes up, he's not going to know where he is. Now, he's going to sleep for a while, and I think it would be a very good idea if you got yourself some sleep. I don't mean to be cruel, but there's nothing you can do now. All we can do is wait. What can I wait to? Right here. I'll get back as soon as I can. Thank you, Arthur. Are you going to Timmy? No, no. Please, darling, wait a minute. I'm going to get things squared away at home and come back. Uh, take care of yourself. Give Timmy a kiss for me when you see him. Dr. Addison's worried about brain damage, isn't he? I mean, if, if the fever doesn't go down, that can happen, can't it? Nancy, do you trust Mark Addison? I do, too. Come on, I think a cup of coffee will do us both good. Thanks. Is Jeff coming? Jeff? He doesn't even know we're here. Honey, you must call him. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. Nancy. Jeff is Timmy's father. You must tell him his son is ill. You'd never forgive him. I'll call him. I don't know why I thought there would be. Just because his son is ill, there's no reason why his social life should come to a grinding halt. Oh, thank you, Willie. I had no idea how hungry I was. I want to go to the hospital. Well, you won't be able to see him, you know. It's okay. I'll just sit around. No, then let's all go. Maybe Nancy will feel better if they're all there with her. Dad, why don't we draw Buddy off, and then you and I can go and get the tree? A tree? Yeah, Christmas tree. Tonight's Christmas Eve. If we don't take care of it now, we're going to be out of luck. Yeah, well, I can't think about the tree right now, Willie. Me neither. Well, now, hold on. We have to take care of it today or we won't get one. We always have a Christmas tree, Dad. You're the one that made it mean so much to us. Willie, I can't deal with it right now. I'm sorry. Come on, kid. You have to go. She's in with Timmy. How's everything? The x-ray showed some congestion in the lungs. He's having trouble breathing. Oops. I'm sorry. Try not to cry for a minute. Thank you. I'm all right. Uh, can I get you anything? Some coffee. I'd like some too, uh, Willie. Nurse Bartlett, call physical therapy on 214. 
Nurse Bartlett, call physical therapy on 214. Doesn't look like it's gonna be much of a Christmas for these kids. Darling. He'll be okay, I know it. Nancy, is there anything we can do for you? I don't think there's anything anyone can do. Mother, would, would you all just go home and do whatever it is you'd be doing? Seeing you sit here, it's, it's like it's all over. All right, darling, if that'll make it easy for you. Daddy would stay, please. I, I don't think I want to be alone. I'll tell Willie and Buddy to go home. Tell them I'm sorry. Is she okay? Not really. Um, I think Nancy would be more comfortable if there weren't so many people here. Would you and Buddy mind? No, of course not. Come on. Come on, Buddy. You will call, right? Oh, of course, darling. The minute we know anything. Go to her. She wants to know we're here, but she needs some distance. Why isn't Jeff here? Nancy called him once. I called and called. There was no answer at his place. I'll try. Jeff, yeah, this is Doug Lawrence. No, listen, uh, Jeff, Timmy is ill. No, no, we're all at the hospital. No, it doesn't look good. Thank you, you bananas. Where is he? To the left, 304. Thank you. What's the matter with Get you? out of here. Just leave me alone. Is Timmy in there? You want to see him? Yes. Come on, go on in there. Go on and look at him lying in that bed. Look at the things they're doing to him. And listen while you're in there, because there's not a sound. He hasn't made a sound in hours. And he may not ever make another one again. And if he does, that's all your fault. You have to live with that the rest of your life. 
I knew he had a little cold. I called Dr. Addison early last night. He said it didn't seem serious. This morning, I called Nancy. There was no answer. I tried your house. I figured everybody was busy with Christmas. We know that, Jeff. He didn't seem sick. We were laughing together in the car on the way home. I wouldn't neglect him. Nancy has to know that. She doesn't know anything. She's too frightened to think clearly. I'll go look for her. No, don't. She needs some time. I'm sure she's still in the building. We could have her paged if uh, she's needed. All right. I'll go back in and be with Timmy. If she comes, will you tell her I'm with him? Of course. Stop it. Stop what? I'm decorating a Christmas tree. It's Christmas Eve. Practically everybody else in the world's doing what I'm doing. I want to go back to the hospital. We should be there. No. I'll call if anything happens. Willie, I know what you're trying to do. But there's no such thing as magic. <sighs> magic? You know what I'm talking about. You know you do. All I know is that we have a Christmas tree in this house every year. And we're going to have one this year. Say what it's really about, Willie. That you can't stand seeing anyone else sick. We should be there like you were with Lizzie. Willie, the tree, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, yes, it does. It means the same as it did last year. It's part of the cycle of life in this family. It's one of the constants. If we don't have it, it's as if we're saying that it's all only a formality. I don't believe that. It's by celebrating the events in the cycle that helps keep us all together. I'm just trying not to let the cycle be broken. Eight months old, we got you that little swing. You loved it so much. Oh, I bet when you grow up, you won't even remember it. It was yellow. Had a canvas seat. When you sat on it, your little feet stuck out in front. Had a little music box on the top. And it played... I've been working on the railroad. We'd wind it up and it would just swing you back and forth. Mommy called it the clockwork lemon. It would swing and swing and finally you'd just fall asleep. I'd pick you up and carry you to your crib. I always thought that you knew that it was me carrying you. 
Do you know I'm here now, Timmy? I am, little guy. Daddy's here. But I can't. I, I can't leave Nancy. Kate, you're exhausted. And if Nancy needs you, it'll be a disservice to her if you're not rested enough to give her support. You don't have to go if you don't want to. I want to go. I'll stay here. I'll call you. Please come with me. Jeff's here. He and Nancy should be together. We should be home. I am exhausted, but that's not it. I feel so useless here. You'll be frantic when you get home. No. Willie and Buddy are there. It's almost Christmas. I want to be there when the day begins. I want to get on with it the way we always do. And I want to think of Timmy every minute of the time. And will him to come home, share it all with us. Dr. Hansen, you can tell him we've left. Just a few minutes this time, please. I'll be right outside. Thank you. He's so like you. That's part of what I love about him. I always thought it was like you. Remember our first Christmas Eve together? It was just three months after we were married. No, I mean the very first one. I just come down from Yale. Billy Triplett was giving his big Christmas party and he didn't want me to come without a date. So he fixed me up. Well, a high school girl. I didn't want to go. Uh, Linda McFarlane said I had to, or Billy Killer. I remember standing around the hallway waiting for you. The Christmas tree looked so pretty. I was wondering what you would look like. Then you came downstairs. I had on a green velvet dress. Yeah. With a little green ribbon in your hair. You were the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. Wish it was then.
I know, Burr. I know. <laughs> I know. Thank you for doing this, Willie. I hope Dad isn't angry about this trade. He's not. He knows why he did it. We both thank you. Hello. Nancy, yeah? Yes? I certainly will. May I love to you both. Bye. Timmy's awake. His fever's broken. He's all right. Merry Christmas. Some Christmas cheer, darling. Oh, good. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, oh you're back. Oh. I can see with your faces, Timmy's all right. Oh, Mom, it's it's incredible. You wouldn't even know he'd been sick. He's propped up in bed trying to decide which of 20 presents to open. Well, can we see him? Absolutely. In fact, we might not be able to bring him home tomorrow. He's going to be on medication for a couple of days, but he's going to be fine. Oh. Uh, when do we eat? I'm starving. In about half an hour. Well, more important, when we get to open our presents? Not till the kids get back. Yeah, I still don't understand why they're not here. Willie had some errand to run, and Buddy says thing about going over to see Audrey's tree. Maybe we could just open one each. Oh, not a chance. Have some eggnog instead. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. It'll help pass the time. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. No, Al. Well. About your present. Yeah, about yours too. I sure hope the kid who gets it wants to be a writer. I hope one of them is a Mickey Mouse fan. Me too. Thanks for the watch, Will. Thanks for the pen, buddy. <laughs> I guess we can read each other's minds. I know we can. Let's go home. It's time for dinner and I am starving. Exactly what I was thinking. Isn't that amazing? Thank you. 